Welcome to Evening Prayers from Stamford Methodist Circuit for today, Saturday the 6th of August. Within the wider church calendar, today is the Feast of the Transfiguration. As our opening music reminded us, our gospel names Jesus Lord of the Earth. We sing his glory, tell his worth. This visionary event recorded in the gospel gave the closest disciples a unique insight into Jesus' relationship with God and with the key figures of the Jewish faith which preceded him and within which he stood. Through these seven days, we're reading in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, the chapter which includes Luke's account of this event. So today's account is set in context for us. Let's be still. In the beginning, the world was filled with darkness, and it was black as night. But God came and changed all that. He filled the world with his light instead just like the sun that shines in the sky every morning. And so we hear Luke's account of the event on the mountaintop, chapter 9, beginning at verse 28, and in J.B. Phillips's version. About eight days after what we were hearing before, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and went off to the hillside to pray. And then while he was praying, the whole appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became white and dazzling. And two men were talking with Jesus. They were Moses and Elijah, revealed in heavenly splendor. And their talk was about the way he must take and the end he must fulfill in Jerusalem. But Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep. And it was as they struggled into wakefulness that they saw the glory of Jesus and the two men standing with him, just as they were parting from him. Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here. Let's put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he didn't know what he was saying. While he was still talking, a cloud overshadowed them, and awe swept over them as it enveloped them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And while the voice was speaking, they found there was no one there at all but Jesus. The disciples were reduced to silence and in those days never breathed a word to anyone as to what they had seen. Shall we make three shelters? Can we hold on to the vision, put it in a building or a bottle, stay with it? Many of us will have experienced moments when we have been unusually aware in some way of the immediate presence of God, absorbed. Of course, we don't know what really happened on the mountain, we're hearing an account of the event, presumably from one of those who was there, Peter, James, or John, overwhelmed by such an encounter with God's glory, and then mediated through Luke's academic analytical mind. But remember the context. In Luke's account, at least, it follows immediately on Peter's intuitive assertion of who Christ really is. This vision is not giving them a new insight, it's confirming something they have already expressed. This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Yet Peter again, Peter the impetuous leaping in, how do we preserve this moment? And it can be our own response too, to a moment of deep insight. Hold on to it, but it slipped through their fingers. Suddenly there was no one there. It slips through their fingers as it slips through ours. And in Luke's account, we shall hear tomorrow, that when they came down from the mountain, they were plunged straight back into the everyday world. Our own experiences of the closeness of God hold and encourage us when faith wears thin. Just so the mountaintop is a memory, an anchor, a confirmation. Its presence in the gospel account preserves, preserves not the event itself, but preserves a shared memory so that it can anchor our faith too. Think through the story again in a new song by Brian Wren. Let us if we dare.
Today, Lord, we give you thanks for the victories of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that these were real victories when in the dust and heat of our human struggle. We thank you that they were victories of love, won not by the sword, but by example, by conversation and by teaching, by patience in well-doing and by endurance of evil. We thank you that they were victories not for himself alone, but for the benefit of the whole of humanity. We thank you for his victory over suffering and pain, his power to release people from the bondage of crippling disease. We thank you for his victory over sin, disarming it and setting human lives on a new course. We thank you for his victory over death, enabling people to die in the sure knowledge of the resurrection to eternal life. Because he is still the world's greatest champion and conqueror, we gladly own our debt to him and our allegiance. In the prayer manual today, we're praying with Christians in Southern Africa. The Methodist Church of Southern Africa includes Botswana, Swaziland, now Eswatini, Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia, and the Republic of South Africa. And in our own connection, we think of the Bolton and Rochdale district. So let us hold before God the leaders of the Methodist Church in all those areas of Southern Africa. For the church programs around the world that are releasing resources to equip local churches and to show love to their neighbours and communities. We give thanks for the resilience of the people and for the witness in Christ's name. and in the Bolton and Rochdale district. We give thanks for the circuits there as they redraw their mission plans, for the schools in the district, and for those in leadership positions who have faced difficulties and uncertainties. A prayer from a child at Culford School. Lord, we come to you when our hearts are filled with worries and when our burdens are heavy. You give us strength no worldly creation could match. You give us joy that reaches far down into our soul. You give us a place where we are not rejected, where your spirit brings new life and pure wisdom, where we feel included, safe and loved. Help us to bring your inclusiveness into the world and to let everyone know about your goodness and love. 
loving God. Whether in joy or in fear, help us to feel you near. Open our eyes to see that your love has set us free. Give us grace to pray for others every day. May we share around the hope that we have found, and may your radiant light dispel the darkest night. Amen. And so we share together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who claim allegiance to him reflect his life in word and deed, so that all around us may see his power to change and to save. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together. Wherever you are, whatever your faith, may the blessing of God beyond us, God alongside us, and God within us, be with us all now and for always. Amen. <laughs>